Hi guys, here is Peter from Becoming. I teamed up with Nathaniel, the author of Terrain Composer, and together we will release a series of tools that will improve the workflow inside of Unity. Uh, the first product in the SNAZY tool series is SNAZY Grid, which is now available on the Unity Asset Store. I'm going to explain a little bit what it can do for you and in what scenarios you'll find it most useful. So this is the import dialog, make sure everything is selected and click import. It will take a second. If you take a look in the menu on the window, you can see a new entry named SNAZY Tools, go inside, click on SNAZY Grid. And as you can see, there is a quick start guide built right into the window. And apart from brief feature explanations, there are also buttons to quickly access the manual or to go to the forum. So if you have any questions or feedback, this is the place to go. The first thing you probably want to do is to dock the window next to your scene view. So let's do that. And if you ever need to see the quick start guide again, you can just scale the window up and it's right there. There are also tooltips assigned to each button, which not only explain what the button does, but also which hotkey is currently assigned to the functionality. Before I go over the interface real quick, let's open the included demo scene. Go under SNAZY Tools, SNAZY Grid, Example Scene, and load the example scene. Okay, here it is. At the top there is the grid button and it shows or hides the grid. And you might wonder why there is no grid visible even when the grid is active. Well, SNAZY grid is a local grid that's based on your selection. So select one of these cubes here and you can see the grid now and that the button indeed does work. Rotate around the selection and you can see the grid is view dependent. And that brings us to the first slider, which controls the view dependency. So if we put this all the way to the left, grid is least view dependent. It will show multiple axes at the same time. And if you put it all the way to the right, it's most view dependent will only show one axis at a time. I like to have it somewhere in the middle so we can see a nice crossfade happening. The second slider controls the area size of the move indication. So let's move the slider. At the moment the grid is pretty small so let's quickly go into the settings, scroll down the grid size to a value of 32. And you can see the grid is now bigger and the slider has more effect. The next thing is the grid size, which is in scene units. You can put any number in there or just click on the button to cycle through some preset values. Left-clicking cycles forward, right-clicking cycles backward. And then we have the increment section. It's for moving objects with the move buttons or move hotkeys. There are two increments and the purpose is to quickly um, select or switch between the most used increments. This is also assigned to a hotkey, currently zero on the numpad, so if I hit zero or if I click the button, it will switch between the increments. Next we have the angle selection, which is very similar. Uh, two angles can be set and you can switch between using the buttons or hotkeys. You can also middle click or right click these buttons to cycle through the angle presets. And the same goes for the increments. Below the angles you can see the selected rotation axis. 
right now it's set to Y. We can click and now the object will rotate around X. Now the object will rotate around uh, C. And bring it back to Y. And we can also switch um, the axis by using the assigned hotkey, which is currently divide on the numpad. So let's rotate with the hotkeys, switch the axis, switch the axis again. You have already seen it, these buttons here let you move and rotate your selection based on the grid size and increments or angles. If you enable animated materials, you can see there is a streak coming out of the pivot of the selected object. It will help you to see the position in relation to adjacent objects. And also these little crosses will indicate where the object will be placed when you move it with the uh, move buttons or move hotkeys. Then we have the focus button. And this is assigned to numpad 5 and when you enable it, it will always keep the selection in the center of the scene view. So let's enable it. And if we move the object now, you can see the camera is following the object. This little D button is basically the same as the Unity Duplicate command, Control D. Uh, we added it because we found that it is used so often that it should be accessible very quickly. And it's also assigned to the hotkey numpad multiply. So let's delete these objects again. And then we have the move mode slider. And if we are in horizontal mode, four and six will always go left and right. Eight and two will always go forward and backward on a, on a horizontal plane. And page up, page down will always go up and down on the Y axis. And while in free mode, 8 and 2 will always be on the grid, 4 and 6 will always go left and right on the grid, and page up, page down will go, always go forward and backward. Next we have the snap section, left clicking the snap button will enable disable auto snapping. Middle clicking will perform a manual snap for the selection. So let's move this a little bit and middle click the snap button and you see it snaps back to the grid. And the right click will perform a reset of the transform. So if we right click, all the transform values will be zeroed and scale will set to one. Let's move this one back on a manual snap, re-enable snapping. Also, um, this is assigned to a hotkey, which is currently a period on the numpad. So we can enable disable snapping by tapping this hotkey. We can hold the hotkey down to temporarily um, disable or enable snapping. If we let go, it will be back on and Let's move this a little bit off the grid. If we double tap the hotkey, it will perform the manual snap. This behavior is the same for all hotkeys of the snap sections. And then we have the position snapping. This is assigned to keep at one. It does exactly the same as the snap button and hotkey, but only for position. The same can be said for the single axis below. So you can enable, disable certain axis for position snapping. Rotation works just the same. The hotkey is three on an numpad. And for scale, because it's used less often, um, there is no um, hotkey, but you can of course assign one. 
Oh, maybe I have to point out that position snapping is based on the grid size, while um, rotation snapping is based on the angle. Uh, next we have some little helper tools that have proven to be very time-saving. Uh, let's start with the U button. It stands for unparent. Let's select a few cubes which are currently parented to this object. So let's select a few. I'll go into the top view in orthogonal and start selecting these objects. And I will on purpose forget one of these and select one. And if we click the unparent button, you can see, let's close the parent. These are unparented now. If we want to parent them to a new game object, we can just click the parent button and it will make a new parent at the center of the selection select the children, right click the unparent button. This will delete the parent in the process of unparenting. Middle click the parent button and it will make a new parent at the scene origin. And then we have the child compensation button. This is very useful if we want to move the parent but uh, don't want to affect the children. So move this over somewhere here and disable child compensation. This is also very handy if we um, want to set a rotation point. Um, we can use the rotation and it's rotating around the parent. Um, if we quickly enable child compensation again, move the parent somewhere else, for example here, disable child compensation, use the rotation key again around another axis so we can see very very handy um, then we have forgotten this other object which is still here we can quickly hit unparent close the parent and drop this into our new game object which we can rename now this is the N then we have the settings. I don't need to explain the hotkeys anymore and you have also seen the grid size. Um, we can enable disable tooltips here. We can change the color of the grid. For example, let's go into here so we can see the grid. We can make the grid black, we can make the grid transparent, we can make the grid red if we want. Um, then we have the streak color, so we can recolorize the streak or change its transparency. Then we have the streak scale. This controls the thickness of the of the streak. We have the move indication transparency. This is the colored area on the grid. We can make it more or less pronounced if we want. Then we have the grid offset. For example, if I set the grid size to one, you can see uh, the grid is centered on the pivot. But with the grid offset, it will be offset at a half grid unit. So. For example, a scene like this, which is very much uh, Minecraft-like, you might want to have the grid to surround the cubes instead of be placed in the center. And then we have the vertex push, which you probably never ever need to touch. This is meant for dealing with sea fighting never occurred on our side while testing but in case you have a very very large scene with very huge objects um, and you run into sea fighting problems you can increase the value here 
but I doubt that it's that it will be ever needed. So leave it all the way to the left. So all together there is the manual, the tooltips and this quick set guide and of course this video and I think um, there won't be many questions on the forum but nevertheless I want to encourage you to drop by and give us some feedback. Also it would be great if you give us a rating on the asset store or even take the time to write a little review.